Hey guys, are you looking for an easy way to self-host web applications and you want to have a lot of security where you don't even have to expose any ports to your server? Maybe you want fine-grained user control of what users are able to access what applications you're hosting and even ensure that they implement a multi-factor authentication method. Well, you gotta check out Cloudflare. I'm gonna show you how to set up a tunnel into your network and set up zero trust users that have to use multi-factor authentication to be able to access the web apps that you give them access to. So let's jump in, let's get started. The first thing that you're gonna need is a Cloudflare account. It's totally free. In fact, all these services that I'm showing you right now are free. The only thing that costs any money is having your own domain. So go get a cheap domain and you can use however many subdomains you need for each application that you're exposing to the web. So let's head over to Cloudflare's website. Okay, and then just go ahead and hit sign up. We're gonna stay on the free plan. A lot of services, including the tunnel that we're gonna install today is on the free plan. And I'm just gonna go ahead and log right in because I've already logged in. Now, the only prerequisite to being able to create this tunnel into your network is that you do need a domain name and you need it to be registered in your Cloudflare account. So it's very easy. Wherever you purchase your domain, you're just gonna need to change the name servers so that you can manage the DNS records in your Cloudflare. So go to websites here. You can see I have already added a website, but what you will do is go add a domain and it's gonna check the DNS records. After you add the domain here and go continue, uh, you'll be prompted to choose a plan and we're just gonna stick with the free plan. So we get the uh, free DDoS protection, uh, IP-based rate limiting, uh, protect against high severity and widespread vulnerabilities, and you know just all the security that Cloudflare provides us. Now Cloudflare will provide you two name servers. What you're gonna do is go into your domain provider. Uh, in this case, mine was Route 53. And it, for me, I would just go to my registered domains and then go to actions and then edit the name servers. So you can, you know, copy these down uh, if you want to be able to revert back to what you had it before. Uh, but otherwise, you're just gonna enter in the name servers that Cloudflare provides you. And this can take up to 24 hours to take in effect. After you do that, you will see that your domain is now active and on the free plan. So you can see that I already added wildebeastmedia.com. Now I can use this domain to access my self-hosted applications. So to set up the tunnel, we're gonna go over to Zero Trust in the menu, and then we're gonna go to Networks and then Tunnels. So you can see that I have one little tunnel right here, test tunnel. What I'm gonna do is uh, create a new tunnel. So let's hit create a tunnel and then we're gonna stick with cloud flared for the tunnel type, hit next. And then we're gonna give this a tunnel name. So I'll say YouTube demo tunnel. Hit save tunnel. And Cloudflare makes this very easy to install the client side of the tunnel onto your server. Um, you can install it right onto the operating system uh, or you can do it through Docker. So if you're already hosting your app through Docker, you already have Docker installed, uh, this is a very easy way to do this. I'm gonna wait until I sign into my server so that um, I'm able to just copy and paste the Docker command. Let me go ahead and click next. And then this is what our what we want our subdomain to be that's going to access our server application. Let me go ahead and delete the previous tunnel I have. So I'm gonna go delete. I'm gonna delete this tunnel. Okay, let's jump back in here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and add 
um, a host name, a domain that is going to link to an application that is running on my network, uh, application that's running on my server. So let's go ahead and hop in here and then see that I have a domain dropdown. These are the domains that I've added. And for this uh, subdomain, I'm gonna make this application specific. So uh, I have a virtual machine uh, that I'm gonna be installing the tunnel into, and I have a web application running called Nexus. So I'm going to call my subdomain Nexus. And then in the local network, it's just running on HTTP. And then I'm going to put in the local IP address of the server on the network, as well as the port that it's running on. So before I do this, let me actually hop into the server so I can show you the application. So let me just do that real quick. Hop into VirtualBox here. Okay, so I'm gonna go and clone this virtual box. This is from my last video. I already have Docker installed. Um, I've already set up this web application. So I'm gonna type Nexus. I'm not gonna really go over that. If you wanna see the installation of Docker and Nexus, uh, you can just check out the video and just quickly see the installation part of, of Docker to get you up to date. But I'm gonna go ahead and um, clone this. So I'll say Nexus YouTube tunnel and we're gonna do a full clone. So let's just give this a second. Okay, and then I'm just gonna check the network settings really quick just to make sure that we're on the bridge adapter. That just means that it's accessible as another machine on my network. So let's go ahead and boot it up. Okay, so I'm inside of my virtual machine here. This is basically, this is my server. So let me go ahead and check to see if my application is running on Docker. I'm gonna say sudo docker ps. And we do have it running. So we have sudo type nexus. Let me just check on the local host here that it is indeed up and running. So this is running on localhost 8081. And let's just see if we have the web app up and running. We do. This web application is up and running. And if you have a UFW firewall set up, you will just need to make sure that you've got the port open uh, so that the local network can connect to this. So let's just check that real quick. So let's do sudo UFW status and I can see that I do already have 8081 set up. Just make sure, you know, if you forget to do this and you notice that your Cloudflare uh, hosted application um, can't connect, like there's a server error, probably just because you did not open the port uh, on your firewall. So we need to tell Cloudflare uh, what that IP address is. So to do that, we can just do IP ADDR show. And we're going to come up here and find the IP address. This is the IP address that our router has assigned to our server. So let's hop back over to Cloudflare and I'm going to put in that IP address, which is going to be 192.168.4.1. Seven seven port eighty eighty one, and I can just check this real quick just to make sure I can access it from my local network. And sure enough, I can. So that's that's what Cloudflare needs to be able to to do. So let's go ahead and save that host name. So because I already did this and I haven't modified the record, let me just change the do the domain. I'm going to call this Nexus two wildebeastmedia.com and there we go we have nexus 2wildebeastmediacom service up and running now the only thing is that the tunnel is not yet installed so so we're going to set this up with docker okay so we're going to copy this docker command uh, it's going to include a jwt token that is specific for this tunnel Go ahead and hit that copy. And I'm just gonna open this up in a uh, text editor first and paste this guy in here. 
Uh, the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to make sure that we run this in detached mode like this so that it's running in the background. Okay, now that we have that detached in there, I'm gonna copy this and we're gonna paste it into the terminal. So I'm gonna do sudo docker run. Okay, and then now we can check the status and see that we now also have the Cloudflare tunnel up and running. So let me head back into my Cloudflare account and refresh. Okay, and we see that the status is healthy. So tunnel is up and running. Let me, let me double check my configuration for the host name. So we're gonna look at the host name and that should be up and running. So let me see if this is publicly available. I'm gonna go ahead and click that guy. And there we go. We have we have nexus2.wildebeestmedia.com. It's got the SSL cert and everything. This is right now, this is publicly available to the World Wide Web without opening with you know without port forwarding any ports from my router to my server. My, my server is still uh, only on my network and I just have the Cloudflare tunnel exposing this one particular application. Let's go ahead and try it on my computer as well. And boom, right there, it's up and running. We got this, uh, this web application up and running. So the next thing I wanna show you is have a zero trust user access, which means that it's Cloudflare is going to put a login page on their server in front of your application so that your users that you've given permission to your application, they have to authenticate with Cloudflare first before they can access the web application. So this is, this is awesome. So you want to go to access and then you are going to add an application. And then you see that I already have Nexus dot what it media dot com as an application here. Basically, I'm going to do the same thing, but with Nexus 2. So let's go ahead and add an application. This is a self hosted application. Applications you host in your infrastructure that use Cloudflare's authoritative DNS. So we're going to do that. And the application name, we're going to call this Nexus 2. And the domain is Nexus 2 dot wildebeestmedia.com and we can give we can give it a uh, application logo so that we we can distinguish it from the other apps that we have uh, I'll just stick with the default and we can also have uh, identity providers now I've already set up Google as an identity provider by default you're only gonna have the one-time pin uh, I'll show you how to set up the Google uh, OAuth in a different video. It was pretty easy to set up, but just kind of outside of the scope of this video. So I'm gonna, uh, I just wanna accept the default one-time pin. You're gonna already have this available. Okay, and then hit next. And then now we're gonna set up basically uh, an access policy. So this policy is basically gonna be like, what email addresses are you going to allow to access the application? So I'll say Nexus email. And I'll just leave it like that. This is this is going to be an allow uh, policy. And then for the inclusion, I'm going to say like I can say emails ending in, so you can have like you know whole company enterprise. Um, in this case, I'm going to choose like a specific email. And I'll put in uh, I'll put in my personal email here. Okay, so now I'm only giving myself access to this application. I'll hit next. I'll skip these settings, and I will hit add application. So now we have the zero trust application set up to this domain. Let's see what happens if we try to refresh the page now. And now you can't get to the website. Only an uh, authorized user is gonna be able to get this code. So let me type in my email address and hit 
send me a code. And let's see if I can just go ahead and get this code. All right, got a login code here to my email, 731-290. Okay, and now I have access. So there we go. That's how we give granular access to these self-hosted applications that are being tunneled through Cloudflare. If you made it this far into the video, please show your love by liking it. And if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And I can't wait to see you in the next one. Thanks for tuning in.